Hello and welcome to Quality Food Safety 101 and our HACCP videos continue. Uh, today we will talk about the principle number 4 which is monitoring and it is the step number 9 in the Cordis logic sequence. Let's start. Right. Monitoring is one of the jargons within the HACCP codex logic sequence okay? because a lot of time monitoring is used for multiple different uh, uh, meanings. In English, whenever, whenever you want to check anything, you call it as monitoring. But in HACCP, it's, it is having a very, very specific uh, definition which is uh, specific to HACCP. So that's why this is a uh, kind of a jargon in the industry. I always recommend uh, to uh, all my colleagues uh, and all my uh, trainees that if you are establishing a HACCP system, then monitoring should be used only for a specific meaning. Don't call uh, all the records or all the record sheets should not be called as monitoring sheets. Why? Because then this, they will cause confusion and you will understand that confusion in a few minutes. So let me define the word monitoring for you to understand this point. Monitoring is a planned sequence of checks performed on a CCP to make sure that the CCP is under control and HACCP is not in, in any kind of a deviation. So now this definition clarifies that few points are there. Monitoring is that activity or those checks which are performed on CCPs only. If you have any checks which are not being done on CCP, they are not going to be called as monitoring under the HACCP. Uh, very very strict uh, way if you look at the HACCP. So then what do we call them? You can call them as log sheets, you can call them as checkpoints, you can call them as record sheets, whatever you want to call them it's up to you but I as I said I always try to you know give this point to my trainees that do not call them as monitoring sheets why because they will cause confusion. So as uh, to reiterate again, monitoring is those checks which are done on CCPs to make sure that the CCP is under control and critical limits are being uh, under control. So that's uh, the definition of monitoring. Let's talk about some details now. Right, so we define the word monitoring in case of HACCP or with regards to the HACCP. So why do we want to monitor something or why do we want to monitor a CCP? So the basic idea is that we have some such CCPs in our system which are critical control points and they are necessary for the safety of our food, for the safety of our consumers and we have assigned some critical limits to them which needs to be checked. So checking of those critical limits on the CCP is called as monitoring as we have already established. As a result of monitoring you will get to know two very very important factors. Number one which will be that whether your CCP is under control and your uh, critical limits are being met. That's number one point. And number two, it will be, of course, if there is a failure, then you will get to know that whether your CCP was in deviation or uh, you have to do a corrective action or not. So these are the two major outcomes of monitoring. Ideally, uh, we always want that our monitoring reveals that our CCPs are under control. But if in any case our CCPs are out of control and we are in deviation, we need to do a corrective action. So that's very important outcome of our monitoring as well. One very important outcome of monitoring is that it gives you a set of records which you can maintain uh, and show evidence that your HACCP has been under control for a long period of time. It builds uh, confidence of the team as well as the management and as well as your consumers if they want to audit you in future that you have a certain monitoring records for a long time and your HACCP has been in control or all the CCPs has been in control. So this is a very, very important benefit of monitoring and it also uh, gives a uh, due diligence for audits purpose as well. So these are some benefits of monitoring. Right, there are some characteristics of monitoring which have to be discussed here. The number one and the most important uh, characteristics of monitoring is that it has to give you immediate result. It cannot be that I monitor the temperature and the result will come back to me after five hours. By that time, the food is already gone. Maybe the consumer has already eaten the food if you are, uh, you know, fresh food restaurant. So there is no benefit of that. The process is already passed and it might be the case that the consumer may have food poison because of that. So the monitoring has to give immediate results. There are some checks which give results afterwards. We call them as verification. They are not called as monitoring. This is very important that monitoring has to give immediate results. 
Number two, the tools and the things used to conduct monitoring must be accurate. So if you're using a thermometer, it must be calibrated. If you're using a watch, it must be calibrated as well. If you have an, any automatic system, the calibration mechanism should be there and uh, the people who are conducting monitoring must be trained also. So this is a kind of a uh, litmus test for our organization that we, how do we conduct monitoring uh, shows that how serious we are about HACCP systems. Lastly, the monitoring should relate back to the critical limit and the CCPs. So for example, if my CCP is about temperature control and the critical limit is about temperature, the monitoring needs to be for the temperature, which is going to use a thermometer, which is calibrated. It cannot be that the CCP was about temperature. The critical limit was about temperature, but I am checking the time. There is no logic behind that. So the monitoring mechanism has to correlate with the CCP and the critical limit. How do we establish a proper monitoring procedure? And it is very, very easy. And I will explain to you right now very, in a very easy terminology. There are five questions you need to answer to establish any monitoring procedure. You can use this method for HACCP or anywhere else also. There are five questions. What, when, who, where, and how? If you answer these five questions about a monitoring procedure, you get a proper monitoring uh, procedure established. So let's take example of monitoring of uh, a chiller for a CCP, uh, which is a ready to eat chiller. Uh, it has a CCP, uh, you know, attached to it. And also the critical limit is uh, five degrees Celsius. The target is three degrees Celsius. So what, so what do we monitor here? We will monitor the, uh, the temperature, which is being shown on the display of the chiller. Who will do it? So we can nominate a staff for this or a, or a person who is working in that area. It could be, you know, a production staff. It could be the uh, production supervisor or it could be a kitchen chef, whoever we nominate for that. Where is this monitoring happening? So we need to designate or put the area where this chiller is there and uh, the monitoring has to happen there itself. It cannot be that a person sees the chiller somewhere and then goes to the other room and write the records. No, monitoring has to happen instantly as well. And the records have to be maintained instantly as well. Then the next question is when. So this talks about the frequency. So when it should happen, we can determine the frequency every hour, every four hours. Uh, once a shift depends on the criticality, uh, you know, of the equipment and the type of monitoring we are doing. And the last is how in this case it's a visual monitoring. So, uh, you know, we'll write visually look at the display and if the temperature is uh, within the critical limit, note it down and that's it. So this is the uh, simplest monitoring procedure. Another example I can tell you is uh, monitoring of, uh, let's suppose a, a buffet where our food is being hot hold. And our uh, critical limit is that our buffet should maintain the temperature of the food above 60 degrees Celsius. So we are checking through our thermometer a core temperature of the food. So what are we monitoring? In this case also we are monitoring temperature. Uh, second is where is this happening? So it is happening, uh, you know, in the buffet area. Who is doing it? So we put the name of the designated staff or we put the designation of the staff, whoever will do it. In this case, let's suppose the waiter is doing it or for example the buffet chef is doing it so this is an exact example of that when it is happening so as per our process we are saying it will happen every hour so we want to monitor the temperature every hour lastly how now this how is little bit more longer because we are using a thermometer so we can little bit uh, maybe explain the how part of this so we can say use a calibrated clean sanitized thermometer uh, put the tip of the thermometer into the core of the food without touching the walls of the container and then record the reading, let the reading stabilize and then do the recording. So this is how we defi uh, define the monitoring in this case. So these two examples clarify that how easy it is to, uh, you know, write down a monitoring procedure in the HACCP plan. Right. So we are going towards the end of this monitoring video. Some important tips for everybody to remember here is that uh, the monitoring should be done in such a way that it should be capable or the organization should be capable of doing that monitoring. Uh, if you have a monitoring procedure, which is uh, not able to be achieved by the organization, that's illogical. Okay. And monitoring should be done in such a way also that uh, it makes or keeps the process safe. For example, Think about that you are a uh, warehouse which stores 
frozen or chilled product you, your sole purpose is storing product for other people you are a big warehouse and in one of your chillers or freezers you have millions of dollars of product available with you so can you really afford uh, to have a deviation or a lapse in monitoring you cannot so for these kind of warehouses we always suggest to have a automatic monitoring system which will record the temperature of the whole unit through a remote control wi-fi system and uh, it will keep recording the temperature almost every 30 minutes or 15 minutes and keep the process super secure in in why what, what's the need of that is that if there is a deviation then what happens to that huge amount of product it might be safe but there's always a doubt created when there's a deviation and the customers which are hiring this warehouse are of course giving good amount of money to secure their food so they will never accept a deviated uh, process so in this regards for such items or such industries we always suggest to be having a very robust uh, monitoring mechanism uh, which is very important on the other side for a uh, for a restaurant where the amount of product in a uh, refrigerator is very less they can monitor the product every 4 hours every 3 hours as well uh, there is no big hassle in that because uh, you know as soon as there is a deviation identified they can uh, immediately uh, transfer the product to the another chiller they have uh, you know this kind of uh, what can I say, that kind of uh, options available because as per the law uh, a cool item can is, can stay in uh, temperature above 5 degrees celsius for 4 hours okay that's allowed in the law so if I monitor something at 8 a.m. it was and the temperature was 3 degrees Celsius and at 12 uh, in the noon the temperature is showing 8 degrees Celsius. So four hours are gone, but is that uh, that I have still a few minutes to transfer everything into an, a refrigerator and control the temperature and also I can check the core temperature of my food immediately to verify that the deviation is not there and I can control the wastage. So these are some of the tips to remember that monitoring should be uh, you know done in an intelligent way the process or the procedure of monitoring should be defined in an intelligent way so hope this helps everybody who is pursuing HACCP uh, subscribe to our channel like the videos share the content see you in the next one and the next video is about the uh, corrective actions